Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Heavy Repping. My name is John Tron Davidson and I'm here once again in our beautiful sunlit seagull infested test location in the southwest of England. So today is a rather exciting day as it happens because this is the first chance that I have had to talk to you guys about Rombo. Now Rombo are a new company, uh, they've been knocking about on Kickstarter for a little while, I think it was earlier this year that they really started making their push, but uh, they were one of my earliest uh, interviewees after a wait of many months. Their picks are finally ready and in my hands. So today I'm going to run you through the range and just tell you what Rombo is all about. Rombo is a company that was founded by uh, Judith Heindorf and Carlos Diaz. And it was Carlos that did the interview with me, which you can read at heavyrepping.com. But their whole idea, the whole approach behind Rombo was to take uh, recyclable material and make it into picks so that it's an ecologically sound way of doing it, using waste products that already exists, and also to make some of the best looking plectrums uh, on the market today. Now the the whole range uh, has had it's like it's kind of been a, a little bit of a sort of um, textbook example of how to do a Kickstarter when it comes to uh, anything really, but particularly when it comes to picks because what they did was say we've had this idea here's what it's going to look like. They sent out a few testers to different people, myself included. I actually have in my little trophy cabinet the sixth. Plectrum the company ever made, which is really cool. Uh, but uh, their whole thing was saying, guitarists, we want you to tell us what you want out of this. And one of the wonderful things about this is that it's one thing for a company to say that they want the feedback of players, but it's another thing entirely for them to actually listen. Rombo listened. So when I got the original uh, prototype plectrum, the um, the origami as it's called. So when I got the original one of these, uh, the the grip could have been better, and it felt a little bit on the floppy side. And I can tell you, holding uh, the modern one here today, it's a very different experience. Uh, the material is much much stiffer, and the grip is much much better. And what they've done is said. Okay, rather than saying we'll make a design and then make it thinner or thicker, which is what a lot of companies do, what Rumble have done is they've kept the actual material the same, but then they've changed the shape and ergonomics of each plectrum and each one has been designed for a specific purpose. Now what that means is that instead of having one pick, you've got four different designs, which I will show up here. You've got the classic, origami, waves and the diamond. The picks look amazing. Uh, all the little details like on the waves you know, and all that sort of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each one and I'll test it with the stick and we'll show you exactly what they sound like for the purposes for which they were designed. Let's go. So the very first one we're going to talk about is this. This is the Rombo Classic. This is the thinnest one of the four. It clocks in at a piffling 0.45 millimeters. You can see how much bend there is in it. This was designed specifically for acoustic strumming, acoustic recording, and ukulele. Now, obviously, as it's been designed to work with a uke, uh, it's not going to be a five mil thick piece of bronze. Uh, but I've been incredibly surprised by the conduct of this. If I compare it to something like a Dunlop 50, this doesn't have that clackety clackety fickety fickety sort of sound that you get. It's got an, it's got an oddly um, deep voice considering how little pick that actually is. And one of the things that Rombo have done across their range is they've polished the tips, but then they've put a lot of subtle ergonomics into uh, the grip area. So this one has these little sort of triangular crisscrosses in it and that does give it, it's a little, it, it's enough grip so that if you were playing you would notice it 
uh, but not so much that it's like a Velcro situation. I also think they've done that partly because it will work with a lot of players' hands rather than working with one specific skin type. So, before I get too stuck into it, let's crack out the acoustic and see how she sounds. The second one here is the origami. Now this is the sort of salmon pink version of the original pick that I received, but I can tell you, having played them side by side, uh, this is a huge step forward from the original. The original was much, much closer to the classic. It was really floppy. Uh, these are 0.75 of a mil. There's a little bit more give in this than there is in, say, a Dunlop 73, but it's a very, very odd experience, and I I'll sh I'll explain what I mean. Uh, when I play a 73, I know exactly how it's going to feel. I've been playing them for decades. Um, when you play this at first, it feels like it's stiffer than it actually is. It's very, very hard to explain. The uh, I think that it's something to do with the fact that the tip is a lot neater than you would get on a 351. Uh, the grip is very subtle. You can see in the top there, I hope I'll be able to show this on the camera, but there's a little sort of recess and that nestles against the, uh, the knuckle of your finger very well. So when I was playing, I would normally never use a pick this thin for the electric, um, but it's, <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite urgent and sort of poppy. I suppose would be the right way to describe it. Uh, there is, it says, it says in what's left of my beautiful packaging um, that it is uh, the right amount of flexibility for a snappy fluid attack that's bright and crisp. And um, I've got to say, if that was the intention, that's certainly what it is. You're not going to get a lot of bass out of this, but in terms of a very relaxed, quite jaunty sound, with really, really good note separation. That's excellent. It really is. So, let's hear how she sounds. Let's talk now about the waves. This is the one that I was a little bit hesitant about when I saw the original drafts because I thought that's going to be too small. Um, you're not going to have enough purchase on it. But ironically, <laughs> it has become my probably my favourite out of the range. Uh, I was expecting to love the diamond more, but there's something about how unassuming the waves is. I love this undulating sort of surface that it's got on it. Looks kind of it almost looks like a sand dune that's on the top and back. And again, they have polished the bottom. If you look at it here, it's very, very rounded towards the tip. Um, a little bit more rounded than say uh, a dragon heart. Uh, not too much more, but it's, it's designed specifically for strumming. Now I found as somebody who plays a lot of hybrid uh, picking as part of my style, uh, I found this was excellent for that. It's quite, comparable to how your fingers sound when you're playing that way so it gives a nice even spread of sound but for the purposes for which it was designed this is great it's 1.25 mil and um, it's got enough rigidity there's not loads of flex in it uh, but it's got enough rigidity that you can just blast away and strum without really thinking about it which is kind of the whole point of the exercise uh, I find like the others the grip is quite good, um, certainly not something that I would stress about, and uh, I, I think out of all the time I've spent with this one, um, there's a real consistency. I, you, I got five in, in my pack, you actually get four normally, but they sent me one additional one because the Kickstarter thing, and um, the, the finish and the grip was very, very, very even across them which is a good sign. So what I'm experiencing, you will most likely experience as well 
but instead of yakking away, let's do the boogie. <laughs> So we come now to the diamond. This is the one that, uh, when I was talking to Carlos originally, that I was the most excited about because it is the thickest, clocks in at two millimeters, and the black version of this looks unbelievable. Uh, it's actually in a little pouch on my keys. But this is, this is the one that, if you are watching heavy repping, uh, as a regular viewer, it's probably the one you're going to be the most interested in, uh, because obviously the more more people, the more into boutique picks you are, the more used you are to seeing super super thick plectrums. However, what I would say is that this might surprise you a little bit in terms of what it does. There's a very very subtle um, element to this because obviously there's a hole, right, which I don't think helps with grip particularly, but um, what does help with grip is the fact that, and I'm not sure how I'm going to show you this in the pictures, maybe I'll use one of Rombo's own pictures, but the surface of this looks, <laughs> it's one of those things, it reminds me a little bit of one of the baddies from Star Fox, uh, but it's it's got this geometric sort of lump here, so just here on the surface it's not flat, it sort of bulges out and then back in again. And that feels initially a bit strange, but really very secure. So I found that uh, the bevel that they've done on this, rather than it being a slope that you would get on something like uh, Dunlop 500 series, it's much closer to something like the Swiss Picks Rusty Cooley, or well, just Swiss Picks in general. but even though these have relatively similar tip shapes, they couldn't, they honestly couldn't be more different. So polycarbonate, which is what that's made from, really, really pokey, really aggressive. Um, the pre-consumer recycled uh, sort of fiber material that this is made out of uh, has I'll tell you what it's like, I'll tell you what it's like actually, it's a little bit like a Jazz 3 Stifo, but it's got um, more push to it and it's got uh, a slightly clearer note separation. It's a very, very hard pick to explain, so what I'm going to do is just let my guitar do the talking. interesting approach that Rombo have taken here. You know, instead of going the traditional route or making hundreds and hundreds of things that are all different in loads of different materials, they said what is the most practical way we can appeal to um, reasonably broad demographics of players? And what they've done is created four plectrums that genuinely do excel at the areas for which they were designed. So if you were somebody who just strums and plays chords uh, which is quite a lot of people, then the classic is great. There's no wrist fatigues, so it doesn't weigh anything. Um, it's very, very flexible. So you can just rattle away for ages and you don't get any um, feedback up your wrist, like shock feedback. Uh, the waves and the origami were really, really good for strumming, but I preferred the waves out of the two, maybe just because it's stiffer and I'm used to that. Um, that was a real surprise though. Uh, especially with electric, there's a, you can sort of get like a little bit carried away, not in like a uh, shreddy sort of sense, but like how little effort is required in order to make it work and to get the most out of it. That was 
that was the surprise of the bunch. So if you have even the least bit of interest in this, and you absolutely should, please go to rhombopix.com. Uh, I shall leave a link in the description below as well as a thing here, hopefully. And uh, follow them on Instagram, ask them questions. They're very, very good um, with responses. And given that they are all from a sort of engineering and design background, uh, as well as being musicians, I love the fact that they've thought about what you might actually need and tried to save you from yourself by making, by, by making four options that you would actually use in the real world. Um, so what Rombo will do next, I couldn't say, but in terms of being an exciting new entry to the industry, absolutely. So I hope you've enjoyed our little romp through the Rombo catalog. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up at Heavy Repping on Instagram uh, or Facebook or Twitter if you have to. I don't really use that, but it's there all the same. And I will be back next week with more news from the Plectroverse. In the meantime, my name is John Tron Davidson. This is Heavy Repping, and I will see you soon. Just remember, if you're not sure what to do in life, rep hard, rep heavy. <laughs>